All right, so in this video, we're going to compute the derivative of the natural log of x, ln of x. Uh, but to do that, we're gonna have to first, you know, review what we know about inverse functions. So recall that ln of x natural log of x is the inverse function of e to the x, which we just reviewed how to do that derivative, right? And so we'll just review inverse functions and we'll show how to take a derivative of an inverse function using the chain rule. And then we'll apply that to natural log of x to get a nice rule for how to take the derivative of ln of x. Okay, so we're called an inverse function. An inverse function, or let's say f has an inverse function, f of x has an inverse function. f inverse of x if, you know, f of f inverse of x or f inverse of f of x just gives us x, okay? And so, you know, if we have, let's say a line, let's say we have y equals uh, one half x minus one, right? So let's say this is our f of x, right? Then we'd find f inverse of x by solving for y. And so this is our example. So if I solve this equation for y, we get, let's move the one to the right. So we have y plus one equals one half x, and then two y plus one is equal to x, right? And this would define our inverse function, right? It's a function that gives us uh, the input as a function of the output as opposed to the output as a function of the input, right? So we'd say f inverse of x would be two x plus one, okay? And then if you were to apply f to inv f inverse, then you'd end up with getting one. So f of f inverse, right? If I apply this, right? I'm applying f to two x plus one, right? So I plug two x plus one into one half x minus one. So that gives me one half times two x plus one minus one, right? That gives me a half times two gives me one. So I get x plus one minus one, which is indeed x, right? So that is the inverse function, right? The other inverses that we know, you know, is f of x equals e to the x has inverse, f inverse of x is natural log of x and the other way around right f of x equals natural log of x has inverse e to the x right for this one inverses are often but not always uh symmetric okay so the inverse of one is the inverse of the other usually okay and so if we graph these we can see there's there's a relationship between our two functions Right, so we'll start off with those linear functions. So we have y equals one half x minus one. That was our first function. And its inverse function was the line y equals two times x plus one. Okay, and so what you can see here in dotted black lines is the identity line, y equals x. And so when you're plotting a function, its inverse is actually the same function, but then reflected across this line. Right, so we've taken this, and we've kind of put it in a mirror where the mirror is sitting along this line and reflected it across, right? So this is like the, the reflection of this first function, right? And so what we've done with the slopes of these is the slope of one is just one over the slope of the other, okay? So this is gonna be really relevant to thinking about our derivatives, okay? Well, let's show, you know, these kind of curvy functions. Maybe you can get a better sense of how this is a reflection. So here's y equals ln of x. Right, and then if I reflect it across this uh, axis of symmetry here, right, this is asymptoting at zero, and it'll turn into an asymptote here, and this one's going to go off to infinity there, off to infinity here, right. So if I reflect that across, you can see that this is indeed kind of a mirror image of the first, and this is the inverse function e to the x. Okay, so let's switch back, and then I'll derive the uh, derivative of the inverse, and then we'll come back to this graph. And there's a nice graphical interpretation of the derivative of an inverse function. 
Okay, so let's switch back. Okay, so we'll compute the derivative of an inverse function. Right, and we're gonna do a little trick to compute this. Right, we're gonna start with f applied to f inverse of x is equal to x, right? This is the definition, right, or a property of f and f inverse, right? If you compose them, you end up with x, right? But now that we know the chain rule, we can take the derivative of this composition, okay? So if I apply the derivative to both sides, or I take the derivative with respect to x of both sides, right? Here, I'll apply the chain rule. So d dx of f of f inverse of x. And then on the right side, I have derivative with respect to x of the function x. Okay, so this one gives me the chain rule. So I get f prime of f inverse of x times f inverse, or, you know, the derivative of f inverse with respect to x. So I'll write it like this. Okay, so let's make this. This is its own thing. And then on the right, if I take the derivative of that with respect to x, well, that's just the function x, right? So its derivative is 1. Okay. And now we're going to solve for the derivative of f inverse, right? And it's hard to use the prime notation with an f inverse because then, you know, there's, um, sometimes you write it like d dx of f inverse, or you could write this as f inverse prime of x, same thing, okay? I think this one's a little more clear, but, but this one is the uh, notation the book uses. So whichever one you prefer. But in any case, we're going to solve this equation for our derivative of the inverse function, right? Because that's what we are trying to show what the derivative of an inverse function is. So we're solving this equation for d dx of f inverse of x. So uh, we're just gonna divide both sides by this term. So we get d dx of f inverse of x, right? So the derivative of the inverse function is one over the derivative of f evaluated at f inverse of x. Okay? And so this is the formula for calculating the derivative of an inverse function. Okay? And so let's do the computation for e to the x and then we'll kind of explain the geometry of this. All right? So an example, or, or maybe more of a consequence of this would be Let's consider the function f of x equals e to the x, which has inverse natural log of x, right? So if we want to compute the derivative of natural log of x, right? That's the derivative of this inverse function, right? f inverse of x, which means it's one over f prime of f inverse of x, okay? And our function f is e to the x, right? So f, let's call this of g, is e to the g. So f prime of g is also e to the g, right? So what that means is that f prime of f inverse of x is e to the f inverse of x, which is e to the natural log of x. And because these are inverse functions, right, e to the ln is the same thing as ln of e, right? They cancel out and you're left with just x. So what this gives us is the derivative of ln of x is equal to one over x. Okay, and so that's a rule that we can then memorize. All right, so derivative of, let's say, g of x equals ln of x, natural log of x, is g prime equals one over x. Okay, so that's the derivative rule for natural logs. Okay, but it's coming from this derivative of an inverse function, which comes from applying the chain rule to, oops, right, so this is applying the chain rule 
to this function composition, which defines an inverse function. Okay, and I'll show you a nice graphical interpretation of, of what, this, what this formula really means. So let's switch back to my graph. So again, we have our function here, ln of x. It's inverse e to the x, or, or maybe this is the function and this is its inverse. Either way, they're both inverses of each other, so it doesn't really matter how we think about it. So let's take the tangent line to this function at x equals 2. All right? Tangent line at x equals 2 has slope a half. Um, right? Derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so at x equals 2, the slope will be 1 over 2. So the slope here is 1 half. And then if I reflect this function across this axis of symmetry, and I can reflect its derivative, right? I can reflect this tangent line. I'll get y equals e to the x, and its tangent line at the same uh, value, where now we're looking at y equals 2, as opposed to x equals 2, right? Because this is an inverse function. So at y equals 2, its tangent slope is 2, right? So this is, um, this is the other function, right? So this would be inverse slope, which is just a reflection of my first slope. So it has slope one over, right? So that's kind of what our equation says. If we go back, right? The slope of our function, slope of our tangent function at a point x is one over the slope of the inverse function at the corresponding y value. Right, so f inverse of x would give you the y that corresponds to x. Okay, so it's a little confusing, but really you're just reflecting these two pictures across the axis of symmetry. So you're reflecting the f inverse to get your f function, right? Reflect a function to get its inverse, reflect a tangent line to get the other tangent line. Okay, so reflect your function to get its inverse function, reflect its tangent line to get the other tangent line and their slopes will just be one over each other, right? Because that's what it was when we just had a actual reflection of just two inverse lines, right? When you had these two, they have opposite slopes, right? So when I reflect this tangent line, it has an opposite slope once we've reflected it across this axis. So that's really the only place where that, that equation is coming from, even though it looks pretty complicated, okay? And then with that equation, we have a way to derive the derivative of ln of x, right? And so then this is kind of the, the takeaway from this video is taking the derivative of a natural log is actually pretty easy, right? It's one of the more simple formulas, even though it was kind of complicated to get there. Uh, this is all we'll need to compute the derivative in the future. It's just knowing that the derivative of ln of x is one over x, okay?